Jacques Imbert, the 30th of December 1929, the 11th of November 2019, was a French gang leader who first came to prominence in 1960s Marseille's underworld, where he was considered the last godfather. His nickname, Jackie Le Mat, means Jackie the Madman in Provençal. He was also known as Pacha and Maitau A. Early life Imbert was born in Toulouse the son of an aviation worker with a passion for opera. Imbert was sentenced to five years in prison in 1947 for an assault on his mother-in-law's lover in a Montpellier bar, but served less than two due to good conduct. In his time in prison, he later declared, The first true damned stupidity of my life, I had hit my mother-in-law's lover a little too hard. I got five years. The prison, this is the place where I met the biggest number of tossers, a pack of pathetic ones, of losers. But I was put in a cell with a true tough guy. I said, this is it, my path. The tough guy was Gustav Mella, nicknamed Goulet Terrible, another criminal that would become notorious in the 1960s. Whilst in prison Imbert decided on the nickname Jackie Le Mat, meaning Jackie the Bottom or Jackie the Madman in the slang of the time. In 1948 Imbert enrolled in the French army and spent four years in the 15 Régiment de Terreurs Senegalais in Oran, French Algeria. He was discharged for having a character incompatible with military regulations. Years with Les Trois at the start of the 1950s Imbert joined the band Des Trois the Three Ducks Gang, so named after the Cabaret Club, which was their den. The gang specialized in burglaries, hold-ups and racketeering, and was said to have built a cellar in their club in which people who resisted paying protection money would be tortured. It was while he was in this gang, mainly composed of Marseille Italians, that Imbert met another future gang leader, Taini Zampa, with whom he would forge a close friendship. Other members were Marius Bertella, Gagin Le Manchot, Gagin the One-Armed, and Gaetan Alborio. It was with them that the young Imbert learned the ropes of the trade, becoming a central element of the team, thanks to his self-control and his determination. Imberti's legitimate work during this period was as a stunt driver, also taking part in races on Marseille's Old Harbor. He became known as a womanizer, with two marriages and six mistresses. In 1961 he was convicted of pimping in a case involving Raymond Infantes, the kingpin of Oran's brothels, and condemned to six months in prison. Infantes had played on his connections to escape a prison sentence while implicating Imbert, who would never forgive him. Imbert exacted his revenge on Infantes, under cover of the night. He piloted a small Cessna airplane across the Mediterranean to Algeria, kidnapped Infantes and brought him back to Marseille, where he tortured him and demanded a large sum of money as ransom. Fearing for his life Infantes paid up, and the money permitted Imbert to set up his own gang. Imbert hired 20 men without Zampa's knowledge and, while appearing to remain under Zampa's control, he began to run his own separate organization. On the 14th of April 1963 Imbert shot a Corsican Parisian boss, Jean-Baptiste Andréani with a shotgun, twice at point-blank range. Andréani survived. The motive of the shooting is not clear. It might be that Andréani refused to pay the 500,000 franc protection money demanded by the three ducks, or it may have been a contract taken out by Andréani's rival, Marcel Francisi. The Ben Destroa Canards disbanded around 1965. Mob boss Antoine Gourini was assassinated in a drive-by on the 23rd of June 1967. Imbert is suspected of shooting him on Zampa's orders, as Zampa was still Imberti's boss. The murder was supported by the Milieu gang, who wanted revenge for the killing of Robert Blement by the Gourini clan. In 1968 Imbert was put on the police organized crime file with the number 9968. He also became a trotting driver with his friend Alain Delon in 1968, and in 1973 he became the French champion. 
attempted murder by Zampa gang on the 1st of February 1977 Imber survived a murder attempt by Tony Zampa's crew. Legend has it that one of the men said, A swine like him isn't worth, lay coup de grace, let him die like a dog. He was shot many times and doctors removed 22 projectiles, including 7 bullets, from his body. His right arm remained paralyzed as a result of the attack, though the French newspaper Le Monde wrote, Small matter, he learned to shoot with the left. Imberti's revenge came when 11 of Zampa's associates were gunned down for the failed murder attempt. Imbert was later arrested as he allegedly prepared for another killing. No charges were brought against him, and he was released after six months. When he came out a truce had been declared. After this period, Imbert seemed to lead a quiet life between the Caribbean, Italy and France. In the 1980s he was also the public relations man for the discotheque, Bus Palladium in Paris, which was owned by his friend Richard Ehrman, a Russian-born businessman. He was a close friend of Francis, the Belgian Van Verberg, another mob boss whose early drug trafficking was described in the movie The French Connection. Van Verberg was shot dead in a betting club near the Champs-Élysées, Paris, in September 2000. Trials police were investigating a criminal operation run by the Russian Mafia who were planning to build a clandestine cigarette factory in a warehouse in a suburb of Marseille. As a part of that investigation police taped a phone conversation between Imbert and Ehrman. Imbert said, Look, all these ups and downs, they are beginning to cause me problems, you get it? Police were convinced this was evidence he was part of the operation run by the Russian Mafia and in October 2003 he was arrested in a police raid on his home. The trial started in November 2004. The state prosecutor asked for a five-year prison term for Imbert, the highest term asked for during the case. Prosecutor Mark Gotan said, Everyone here has testified that without Imberti's authorization nothing could be done. He has a very strong character. He is not a man who takes orders. He gives orders and others carry them out, however, prosecution witnesses later retracted their initial testimony. The only remaining evidence linking Imbert to the Mafia project was the telephone call with Ehrman, which, as his lawyer pointed out in court, is open to interpretation. The case against him is so hollow, so inexistent, so empty, that I am reduced to answering a charge based on the intonation of a voice. The court in Marseille sentenced him to four years in prison for masterminding the operation. It seemed Imberti's long run of luck had run out. However, he appealed and on the 8th of April 2005, at 75 years old, Imbert was cleared of taking part in the scam to manufacture contraband cigarettes. The appeal court found that the telephone tap evidence against him was unconvincing. The link between the Russian mafia and Imbert was Richard Ehrman. On oh, the 16th of June 2006, Imbert was sentenced to four years for extorting money from Paris businessmen in the early 1990s. Imberti's counsel appealed the verdict. But on the 2nd of January 2008, Imbert was sentenced to two years. In popular culture 22 Bullets, a French film released in 2010, was based on Imbert, who was portrayed by actor Jean Reno. References